लेट्स डिस्कस प्रॉब्लम नंबर थ्री ऑन स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ रिकर्सिव गुरुदम्स हेर इज द प्रॉब्लम वट इज द स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ द फॉलोइंग अलगुरुदम दिस इज द अलगुरुदम रिटर्न इन सी लाइक सिंटेक्स वी नीड टू डिटर्मिन द स्पेस कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी ऑफ दिस अलगुरुदम हेयर वी कैन ऑब्जर्व इन दिस अलगुरुदम दैट एफ ऑफ एन इज कॉलिंग इट्स सेल्फ विद इन इट्स ओन बॉडी हेंस एफ ऑफ एन is a recursive function now within this function we can observe that we have two function calls and these two function calls are the same we are calling f of cube root of n two times so from f of n we are calling two functions we haven't solved such type of problem for finding the space complexity now we will learn how to solve these type of problems for this let's remove this problem statement and let's create some space over here now our focus is entirely on this algorithm let's try to solve this problem here we have this algorithm or this function f of n we are checking if n is less than or equal to 7 if n is less than or equal to 7 then we will return 1 from this function this means this is the base case and in the else block we are returning f of cube root of n plus f of cube root of n plus 1 we are calling these two functions and hence we are forming a recursion here so this is the recursive case the base case will be executed when n is less than 7 or if it is equal to 7 our job is to find the space complexity of this algorithm in order to find the space complexity of this algorithm we need to know the flow of function calls because space complexity depends on the depth of recursion and it also depends on the data structure used in the algorithm if you are using a complex data structure then we need to take the space of that data structure into account in this specific algorithm we are not using any complex data structure therefore the space complexity of this algorithm depends entirely on the depth of recursion in order to find the depth of recursion we need to observe the flow of function calls and for this we need to form the tree like structure from f of n we are calling two functions f of cube root of n and f of cube root of n so one thing is clear that from f of n two functions are called f of n power 1 by 3 is same as f of cube root of n because cube root of n can also be represented as n power 1 by 3 so from f of n we are calling these two functions this is the initial tree so obtained here i am assuming that n is neither less than 7 nor it is equal to 7 so the base case is not satisfied we need to know the flow of function calls and it is important to assume that n is neither less than or equal to 7 so from f of n we are calling these two functions because the else block will be executed now what is the next step from f of n power 1 by 3 we again need to call two functions f of n power 1 by 3 square and f of n power 1 by 3 square the reason is that at this moment the value of n is n power 1 by 3 so n will be replaced by n power 1 by 3 in this entire program let us assume that n power 1 by 3 is not less than or equal to 7 therefore the base case is not satisfied and hence the else block will be executed in the else block n will be replaced by n power 1 by 3 or cube root of n and as we are calling f of cube root of n it will be replaced by f of cube root of cube root of n so here we are calling f of n power 1 by 3 square and here also we are calling f of n power 1 by 3 square so from f of n power 1 by 3 we are calling two functions f of n power 1 by 3 square and f of n power 1 by 3 square and the same thing happens for this function also so it is clear that there are two function calls from f of n power 1 by 3 both are f of n power 1 by 3 square 
and here also the same thing happens. Because of the lack of space, I am representing the function calls between these two function calls with three dots. There are a total of four function calls from these two function calls. Because each of these functions will call two functions and both of them are f of n power 1 by 3 square. This is cube root of cube root of n. Now we can observe one pattern here. In level 1, we have f of n power 1 by 3 to the power 0. In level 2, we have f of n power 1 by 3 to the power 1. These two function calls are same. In level 3, we have f of n power 1 by 3 to the power 2. So the power is always 1 less than the level number. Now let us assume that these function calls will proceed in this way and the last function calls will be f of n power 1 by 3 power k. So the last level has all the functions and all these functions are same. They are f of n power 1 by 3 power k. So this is the bottom most level and in this level we have all these functions f of n power 1 by 3 power k. I am representing all the functions between these two functions with these dots. There will be many functions between these two functions. I am not sure about how many functions will be there. But one thing is clear that the last level will have all these function calls. These function calls are the same. They are f of n power 1 by 3 power k. Now, as we have observed that the power of 1 by 3 tells the level number. It is always 1 less than the level number. Here we have k. So this level must be k plus 1. And we know that in order to find the depth of recursion, we need to know the number of levels. We know there are a total of k plus 1 levels. Starting from 1 all the way up to k plus 1. So it is clear that the depth of this recursion is k plus 1. Now here, depth does not depend on the number of function calls. We can observe that pattern when the function calls are linear. This means one function is calling only one other function. But here, each function is calling two more functions. So the depth of recursion does not depend on the number of function calls in this case. The depth of recursion is same as the number of levels. It is my advice that always look at the number of levels to find the depth of recursion because depth has direct relation with number of levels. It does not matter what type of tree you are looking at. It is always better to observe the number of levels of the tree and accordingly you would be able to know the depth of recursion. Depth of this recursion is k plus 1. Now we know what's the depth but we need to find depth in terms of n. So we need to replace k by some n term. And in order to find the value of k, we need to observe the last level. In the last level, it can be observed that function f is called with value of n as n power 1 by 3 power k. So in all these function calls, the value of n is n power 1 by 3 power k. So n will be replaced by n power 1 by 3 power k. And as we are assuming this is the last level, so there are no more function calls after this level. And hence the base case must be satisfied. In order to satisfy the base case, the value of n must be either less than or equal to 7. Let us assume that n power 1 by 3 power k, which is the current value of n, is equal to 7. It can be less than 7, but I am assuming that n power 1 by 3 power k is equal to 7 for the sake of simplification in calculations. It will not affect the space complexity. So here we can replace n by n power 1 by 3 power k and we are assuming that n power 1 by 3 power k is equal to 7. Therefore, the base condition is satisfied and hence 1 will be returned from these functions. So let us assume that n power 1 by 3 power k is equal to 7. Now we can easily find the value of k and we can replace this k by the value of k in terms of n and this will be the depth of this recursion. 
and eventually this will give us the space complexity. So let's find the value of k from this equation. We have k in the power of 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 is in the power of n. We need to bring k to the base and for this we need to take log on both sides. So let's apply log base 7 on both sides because the constant here is 7. Here we have n and here we have 7. If we take log base 7, then log 7 base 7 becomes 1 and hence we have eliminated this constant. So let's apply log base 7 on both sides. Now we are applying log on both sides. After applying log, we are getting log n power 1 by 3 power k base 7 in the LHS and log 7 base 7 in the RHS. What is log n power 1 by 3 power k base 7? We can apply the property of logarithm here. Log a power b base c is equal to b times log a base c. So we will get 1 by 3 power k times log n base 7 in the LHS. So here we have 1 by 3 power k log n base 7. What about the RHS? Here we have log 7 base 7. Log 7 base 7 is 1 because log a base a is 1. So now this is the equation so obtained. 1 by 3 power k log n base 7 equal to 1. Now we can multiply both sides by 3 power k to remove 3 power k from the denominator. After multiplying both sides by 3 power k, we will get log n base 7 in the LHS and 3 power k in the RHS. So this is the equation so obtained. We can observe k is still in the power. We need to bring k to the base. This means again we need to apply log on both sides. So let's apply log base 3 on both sides because here we have the constant 3 in the RHS. In the LHS, we have logarithm. We need to take logarithm according to the constant we have. So here we have constant 3, hence we take log base 3 on both sides. So let's apply log base 3 on both sides. After applying log base 3 on both sides, we will get log base 3 log n base 7 equal to log 3 power k base 3. This is the equation. Now let's solve this equation. In the LHS, we have log base 3, log n base 7. We cannot do anything about it. But in the RHS, we have log 3 power k base 3. We can simplify this further. Here we have log 3 power k base 3. We can apply the property of logarithm here. Log a power b base c is same as b times log a base c. So, we will get k times log 3 base 3 in the RHS. Now, we know log 3 base 3 is 1. So, we will get k here in the RHS. This is the final equation. So, we can say that k is equal to log base 3 log n base 7. We can now replace this k by this value. We are having this depth now. Log base 3 log n base 7 plus 1. This is the depth of this recursion. Now we know the depth of recursion, we can write the space complexity of this algorithm. Space complexity of this recursive algorithm is big O of log log n. I have eliminated all the constants and the bases. So we will get log log n as the space complexity. So clearly space complexity is big O of log log n of this specific algorithm. I have written the worst case space complexity. The best case happens when the base case is satisfied for the first call. Let us assume that n is equal to 7. Then, in that case, the base case is satisfied. Hence, there is only one stack entry and therefore, the space complexity will be big omega of 1. This is the best case space complexity. The worst case is big O of log log n. So, with this, we have solved this problem successfully. And we are done with this topic. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.